Okay, in this video what we want to discuss is how to meter in and meter out a single acting hydraulic or pneumatic cylinder. I have other videos that discuss how to meter in and meter out a double acting cylinder, but in this video what I'd like to discuss is how to meter in and meter out just a single acting cylinder that are common in both hydraulics and pneumatic systems. And the process can be a little similar with some variations. Now, in a single acting cylinder, what we always have to, what makes it a little bit easier is that we only have one hose going to the cylinder. And we're going to focus on a single acting, a single acting extend cylinder, although the process would remain very similar if it was a single acting retracting cylinder. Okay? So in this what we want to do is first we want to figure out how do we control the speed on extension. Now the single acting cylinder, the only way to control the speed of a single acting cylinder on extension is with a meter in circuit. Okay, you have to meter it in to control the speed because um, we cannot meter it out because there's no output when it's extending, okay, like you can with a double acting cylinder. So let's go ahead and walk through this process and you'll see how we control the speed of a single acting cylinder. Now the one that we have right now is a spring uh, return cylinder, but it, the process would be the same if it was a gravity return or if there was some mechanical means to help retract a hydraulic cylinder. So in this, with this circuit what we do, we activate the lever, the, spool's directional, the, the spool of the directional control valve shifts, Oil or uh, air is going to flow from your power source up through here, and it cannot go through the bypass check. It has to go through the needle valve. All right, and so that will restrict the flow as it enters into the cylinder, and it will retract or extend slowly. All right, then when I release the lever, the, sp the spring pushes the spool back to its home position and this retracts quickly because the air or the oil can flow out of the cylinder through the bypass check valve right back down to tank or through a muffler on the exhaust port of a pneumatic directional control valve. Okay, And the nice thing is, is to control the speed of this while it extends can only be done with metering in, and this is the only way to meter in a single acting cylinder. This is it. There's, no, there's not two ways to do it, like with a double acting cylinder. If you want to control the extension, you can do it through meter in or meter out. Well here, you have to, the only way to control it as it's extending is through a meter in, which makes it a little more simple. Um, now. If I want to control the speed while the cylinder is retracting, there's actually a couple ways of doing this. To control it on while it's retracting, you have to control the oil or the air as it exits or it comes out of the cylinder. Okay? And to do that, you have to use what's called a meter out. Okay? So now what this is, now this out in the field would be the exact same valve just hooked up in the opposite way of a meter in. And what you have is a flow control valve with a bypass check valve that will restrict the oil as it comes out of the cylinder. So if I extend it, the cylinder oil or air will come through the directional control valve, through the bypass check valve into here, and this will extend quickly. Okay? But when I let go of the lever and the spring pushes the spool back into its home position, the cylinder all the air or oil on this side of the cylinder will come down through here, but it cannot go through the bypass check valve. It has to go through the needle valve and it will retract slowly, okay, as the oil or air comes down through here. And that's how you meter out a single acting cylinder if you want to have a needle valve with a bypass check valve in it. Now, the other way to do this is to use just a flow control valve, or just a needle valve. And to do that, what you can do is you can put the needle valve right, right out of the tank port or the exhaust port of your directional control valve, okay? So on a hydraulic system, this is what it would look like, okay? Um, you would extend the cylinder, oil flows up through here, or air, this is extends quickly, okay? 
when you let go of the lever, the spring pushes the spool back into its own position, oil or air is going to try to evacuate out through here, and it's going to go through this needle valve, which will accomplish the same thing as the other method of metering out. Okay? It will restrict that oil as it's going back to the tank. The reason you don't have to have a bypass check valve here is because any lines before the directional control valve only have oil going one direction in here. Above the directional control valve, oil and air goes in, go in both directions, so you have to have a bypass check valve on your components. Below this, you don't have to have this because oil will only flow through here. Now, in a pneumatic system, you often won't see this. What you will see is the muffler, okay, with a line through it, okay, and that means it's adjustable. And on the mufflers here, you can always tell because there's like a little flathead screw that can be adjusted. And what that will do is that will do essentially the same thing as having a needle valve here. It will restrict the air as it exits. Okay, and this can be attached directly to the muffler. It doesn't have to be an external line like it does with a hydraulic system. Okay, now notice in this video that I'm actually using a 4 2 valve. Okay, it would be a 5 2 if it was a pneumatic system, but they operate the same. But what we do is we need to block this port here, which I didn't have in the video before, but uh, it's very common. 3 2 valves aren't as common out in the industry. You often find a 4 2 valve with the B port, the B actuator port plugged, okay? Now, let's talk about what would happen if we want to control the speed of the directional control, or the speed of the cylinder on both extension and retraction, okay? Well, this in case, we'd have to meter in and meter out, okay? And this is un very unique to the single acting cylinder. A double acting cylinder, you would almost never do this. So what you do is you set your directional control valve, your uh, flow control valve here, and you put another one here. Notice the arrows are pointing in the opposite ways. Whichever way the arrow of the uh, check valve is pointing will dictate if it's meter in or meter out. Let's follow, we can follow the logic there. So we activate the lever, oil comes up through here, it bypasses this uh, valve through the bypass check valve, comes into here and gets trapped. Okay, and so then everything has to go through the needle valve, all right, and it will extend slowly. Then when the lever is released and the spring pushes back, it's going to come, it's going to retract this way. Oil is going to flow through the bypass check valve of the meter in valve, but it's going to be stopped by the meter out and it's going to be restricted here before it goes down to tank. Okay. Another way to do this is to go ahead and put the flow, the needle valve right here. And again, the exact same operation is going to, going to happen. So what we have, levers activated, oil flows up, cannot go through the meter in circuit. And through here, this will, re, this will extend slowly. Okay. And then when the levers let go and the spring pushes the spool back into its home position, this will retract slowly because all the oil bypasses through here, but it gets restricted by this needle valve here. And these are the ways that we can control the speed of a single acting cylinder. In this example, we're using a single acting uh, cylinder that's on the extension. It would work the same if it was a retraction as well. Okay? And um, again, this can be a little bit confusing on a single acting cylinder because if I'm metering in or I'm metering out, it's typically the exact same valve. It's just the way that it is installed will dictate whether it's being metered in or metered out. And this is why we have to trust our schematic diagrams. And that trick with the arrow, which way it's pointing, determining if it's a meter in or meter out, I really think simplifies it a little bit. Okay. Um, now, I do have another, I have another video out there that discusses how this the same process works with a, with a double acting cylinder. And uh, there's, a, there's, there's some big differences there. So uh, you might want to give that one a watch. Okay? Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.